welcome back everyone it's me matt it's been a while hasn't it it's been a long time actually since i've made some good content and i'm feeling like i've got a little bit of my mojo back so i decided to get back into creating the content that you've always come around onto this channel for which is talking about military equipment today we're talking about military drones and how absolutely honestly i've never been more adamant on this point that we are developing weapon systems in the drone technology world that are totally evolutionizing the way in which battlefields are today. Um, I'm not going to go too much into the specifics of what is obviously going on in the war in Ukraine. You should see my video recently that I released on my channel, probably prior to this video, that deciphers exactly why I don't want to talk about Ukraine and why I will not do so. But of course, going into talking about more military equipment in the future, inherently there are going to be some points which are going to touch upon this. And recently I did see a news report of the Switchblade 300 uh, drone, which is basically a uh, piece of equipment that's been designed by Aero Vermont, which is, uh, or Aero Vermont which is a very popular and very prominent drone technology manufacturer um, here in the West. And they produced this drone to basically turn into what is basically a kamikaze drone. Now, they have a whole host of different capabilities out there, whether it be, you know, surveillance, target acquisition, etc. But this one is specifically designed to destroy targets. It is a kamikaze one-way trip to a target and is going to nuke it from above and not literally nuke it of course i'm not gonna have tactical nuclear warhead drones <clears throat> wait a minute wait a minute take a step back that could be another discussion for another day drone nuclear warheads <laughs> but in all honesty this really has spoke to me a little today because when i saw a news article talking about this equipment and of course how prominent it is on the battlefield of today specifically in ukraine uh it really woke me up to say that yes i've talked about drones a lot on my channel in the past and how fantastic they are and how they're changing the modern battlefield blah 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 but the reality is is that these things really are completely throwing traditional combat and traditional tactics out the window they really are i'm in the artillery i love my trade i love what i do i'm never going to deploy in an operational environment where i'm actually going to put rounds down range i say never never say never uh with the artillery i'm an army reservist i'm here to basically train and and practice to do things that really aren't relevant uh to the modern day environment with the equipment i use but that's off the point the reason i'm bringing that up is because i'm starting to see that the artillery may need to start emphasizing more on this technology uh truly so when you talk about the excalibur 155 millimeter artillery round it is a very sophisticated precision guidance warhead that can be basically gps guided onto a target it's incredible very expensive very accurate and from what i've heard from the users it's a bit of a pain in the butt to use it's very specific it's temperamental uh it has to be used before a certain period when you set it off into its sort of programming mode there's a lot of you know processes that has to go through it's fairly complicated for something that you're punching down the barrel of a 155 millimeter caliber gun however when you launch that round off it goes and there's not a huge amount you can do with it once it's in the air and it programs onto its target with something like Switchblade, we're talking about something that A, isn't quite as complicated, B, is not so much a fire and forget. You know, you're not launching this thing and saying, okay, well, off it goes, just leave it on its own. You do have to do some manual intervention. But the reality is, is you don't need a seven-man crew to set this thing up. You can literally pump it out of a tube, it pops out, and off it goes. And you can have a one- or two-man team that does that, and then basically one individual that just monitors through the camera using this thing. Now it is truly a kamikaze drone. It is there to literally see what it's going to engage, dive bomb it from above, and take it out. There's so much talk about anti-tank guided missiles today, whether it be Javelin, N-Law, etc, etc, etc. But I truly feel that the world of military technology needs to start really waking up to the threat that this kind of equipment is, because a, they're going to be a lot cheaper than an Excalibur round. They're quicker to set up. They're easier to set up. They can be produced en masse. You'd think that something like an artillery round is fairly simple to produce. And in essence, it is. You know, you have your casing. You have the metallic projectile itself. You have the GPS warhead that goes inside of you. You have the explosives sit inside. And in essence, it's fairly simple. 
but it's a heavy bit of kit. The logistics that follows behind trying to get that projectile to engage a target, 155 millimeters of heavy duty projectile to hit this target, there's a lot going on in the background. You gotta get the gun set up, you gotta tow the gun, you gotta train the soldiers, seven of them, you gotta load it, you gotta prime it, it needs propellant, it needs the GPS set up for it, it needs to be programmed, it needs to be guided onto its target with specific coordinates, it, the gun needs to be laid into position, counter battery artillery fire, the, the list is endless in regards to modern artillery being, I wouldn't say impacted severely with this kind of technology, but it's really starting to change it up. When you launch one of these things, not only are you gathering intel with it, you can use its camera, you can use its, um, you know, its drone-like, you know, surveillance capabilities, but on top of that, once you've found a target, you can engage it and kill it almost instantaneously at about probably six times less the cost than you would with, say, a Predator or a Reaper or the more sophisticated flyby systems that require a pilot that's very, you know, very highly trained, uh, you know, lives somewhere in freaking, you know, Nevada and hangs out to turn Nellis Air Force Base. This doesn't need that. You've got an infantry soldier on the field that can bring a couple of tubes of these along with him and take out, you know, a T-80, T-90, whatever tank for that matter, from a long distance away, and at the same time on the way there, gather a ton of intelligence. And once it's taken out the vehicle, there is absolutely no evidence of it obviously occurring ever again. It's it's gone. It's <laughs> it's destroyed itself. You're not concerned about, you know, if the Reaper gets shot down or a Predator gets shot down, there's a lot of technology inside of that equipment, right? They expect it to come home. It's designed so that it doesn't really matter too much if it crashes, but there's still technology in, in situations where having a Predator or a Reaper or the more sophisticated surveillance and even attack drones being captured by ground forces could cause some problems. This thing, I mean, it's small enough that if you wanted to just say, you know what, this isn't working out for me right now, we're probably going to get this thing captured by someone they're going to try and use it. I just nose dive it to the ground and take itself out. And even then, it doesn't have anywhere near the level of sophistication of which a Predator or a Reaper drone would have if it crashed into the ground. I, I feel that this kind of technology is obviously around but not being noticed or implemented enough um i recently went to uh, you know the u.s military's uh, social media group and and started searching through what drones they have and of course there's a plethora of drones they're using including looking at the switchblade 300 and all the technology that it provides from air environment but it doesn't seem like it's a prominent tactic that they want to capitalize on wholeheartedly we talk about, you know, tanks, artillery, the Air Force, infantry, and all of those applications can use this. You can launch it from a plane or a helicopter. The artillery can use it just as a standalone system. You could create a battery of these things, you know, 25 tubes of these things. You set them up quickly out the back of a truck. You need, you know, a team of maybe three instead of a team of seven. And you've launched, you know, 20 programmable long distance guided weapon systems that are very accurate and have a whole multitude of other capabilities that protect it from, uh, you know, fratricide, from killing buddy that you didn't mean to. You know, it's got the wave off procedure, so you don't just program this thing to go into kamikaze mode. It gives out and then just like, you know what? Nah, I'm, I'm not going to listen to you now. I've already locked onto my target. No, you can actually tell this thing to bugger off and come back later if you want it to. And again, even if you don't use any of those 20 drones in the artillery setting, you can use them as, you know, surveillance and target acquisition, things like that. Um, Infantry, take a couple of tubes of these along with you. Yes, you're gonna have your javelin. You're gonna have that, you know, short to medium range engagement package. But now, with two of these things behind you, you can take out tanks from in the long distance range, right? And again, gathering so much intel for, um, you know, the brigade or the battle group behind you with it going en route. Um, and also, I'm not too sure if it's able to provide live recordable feed. I presume it would be, that it can store the data. But it's also good for an after-action review, right? Seeing whether or not uh, targets reacted well enough to one of these things hitting it. You know, if you're putting in a lot of warhead explosives into these things and you're putting it on top of a tank and you found out they didn't actually kill it, you can start learning about the, you know, the capabilities of equipment that you're engaging with these things. There's so much information and capability that these things have and i only really woke up to it today and and kind of said to myself holy cow this is insane like it's it's insanity that i've not realized the importance of drone technology and you know if you've watched my channel how much i've 
pun the pun, droned on about drones, but it's true, guys. Like, this is insanity that you can launch these kind of things and take out a, you know, million dollar tank, couple of million dollar tanks, with something that costs $10,000 that you can launch up to a range of like 15 to 20 kilometers. And nowhere near the logistical burden which our artillery unit, regiment, battery, whatever it may be. Um, and it's, it's baffling to me that no one's really taking it very seriously. I mean, yes, they are being used quite heavily in the war of Ukraine. There's thousands of these things being sent out. But, you know, when I talk to a couple of my friends in the UK about drone technology, they're more more heavily relayed on to the, you know, surveillance acquisition side and just, you know, get gathering intel, not the engagement side. Maybe they're just not quite needing it right now. I don't know. Maybe all the money's going towards the beautiful Challenger 3. But I'd love to hear your opinion on these kind of drones, folks. What do you think of the Switchblade? Um, there's so many other videos out there talking about what they can do, their capabilities. Y you saw a little bit in the footage, as you can see some of the features it has. I'm not going to harp on about it specifically and what it can do because it's just been beaten like a dead horse, but I want to know what you think about this kind of, um, you know, kamikaze style drone technology. Do you feel it's going to be expanded upon at a larger scale? I mean, we're talking about drones that can be sent out, take out carriers, ships, you know, that are cheap, mass industrialized, that don't cost lots of, lots of money, but can be automated or manually controlled to take out ships. Um, even underwater drone technology, like underwater drone torpedoes. I know that sounds ridiculous, but this is where we're kind of getting to. You know, and of course, it never negates the need for infantry, armoured, artillery. There's always going to be a place in the battlefield for the big heavy combat groups. But this seems like it could be a whole new realm of combat trade. You know, we talk about infantry, we talk about armoured, we talk about artillery and engineers, right? Why aren't we talking about electronic drone technology regiments? Like, literally, all they do is go out and hunt and kill with drones like this. Um... Yeah, it's, it's fascinating to me, and I truly think in the next 10 to 20 years, we're going to see that. You're going to have a combat arms that doesn't just, you know, artillery doesn't just embrace this. It may be an completely new doctrine of combat trade that is given to militaries around the world, right? Your infantry, your, art your artillery, your armoured, and your, you know, specialist uh, drone tech, drone ops, uh, drone drone combat trade i think it's i think it's coming i really do you know the development of technology today and the speed it's going is insane and unfortunately war tends to speed up this kind of technology substantially certainly not something you know that i can really stand behind knowing that you know this is happening in real life but it is happening and at least it's a technology that's benefiting a side that's uh, using it to full effect i guess it's, that's all i can say about that Anyway, please let me know your thoughts on this. I'd love to hear about it. And uh, if you did enjoy today's video, please click the little bell by the subscribe button. And uh, thank you everyone who's been supporting me both on Patreon and PayPal. It really does mean a lot. Uh, and of course, if you do want to follow me on social media, I've got my Instagram, my Facebook, and all the other links below. Also, if you want to go check out my sponsorship company that I'm working with, Attire for Effect. They make artillery-based clothing and branding um, stuff. It's really cool. Go check out their website. Some really fun stuff there. It's a veteran-owned business, and I support them wholeheartedly. Thank you so much for joining me again, everyone, and have a wonderful day. All the best. Bye-bye.